Hello and welcome back to the Iceland Sports Field as we are underway for the B Championship game here in the Men's Senior Provincial Field Lacrosse Championships. Lance went alongside of Mark Schutzkowski. Glad to have you with us again as it'll be a big matchup between the Milton Chaos and the London Malloys. And these two teams, when you look at both of them, Mark, they both battled hard to get where they're at here and have earned the chance to play for a provincial medal. Yeah, you know, calling us the B Championship, but you know, really does it a disservice because these are both A caliber teams. You know, get, coming into this, Milton is one of the most organized, deepest rosters uh, and teams in this league. And, you know, the London Mollies are coming off of a, a champion, uh, uh, silver medalist from last year and got upset. I, I don't even know if we call it an upset against the Toronto Blue Jays in the quarterfinals last week. So, you know, we are looking for a good game out of these two teams as, you know, once that whistle goes and they're between the lines here, it's a lacrosse game and I'm hoping we have a good one here. Well, the chaos with the offensive possession here as the Molly's able to stand tall early on and we'll get you the important key figures here. I believe Andy Campbell will be out of this game for the Mollies due to suspension, so they will need to find some goals elsewhere. Chaos do a good job to swing it to the bounce and a nice job there to get things started. And it's going to be one nothing for the Chaos. Yeah, Kyle stared, it looked like. Number four there gets the ball, some open space, and makes no mistake and gives the Chaos a 1-0 lead here, maybe a couple minutes into the first quarter. So just like we spoke about in the A final, possession obviously an important part here, and you'll have to bear with me as we work through some roster changes and a quick turnover. And off the draw again, it's going to be the chaos that control. And they will go to work on offense. And we talk about the draws in the last game, how it's important here that, you know, the chaos got a goal and got possession right away and go back on the attack and look for it to work through number 16, Tyrus Rahanek again, as he's just a one of the best feeders of the of the ball that you'll have in this game and gives us other fellow offensive uh, Patriots a good chance at scoring and getting on the game sheet. So keep an eye there as well and that kick out it will belong to the chaos as they will maintain possession. Some notables of course on the roster for the Milton Chaos that have played their minor lacrosse in Milton. Quick pass in and out to dry. Great finish there by Chase Forsythe. As he will add to the tally and it's two nothing for the chaos. So a good job interior passing. And when you look down the lineup, of course, you've got Joey Zabo, a native of Milton. Then you Roll a little further down. You've got Lucas Rain also, Richard Imus, another local boy. So good to see these young men. Had a chance to watch them when they played Pee Wee. And now they're here playing in the senior men's division and playing for a medal. Well, that's what's great about this league. You know, you see the guys that you've seen playing through minor that you may have you know, coached up against or officiated or anything. Now they're men and they're bringing their families into the fold now. And it won't be a few more years till you see uh, a few of these like Andy Campbell. He's got a young daughter that's running around on the fields and I'm sure she'll be playing some, some boys box lacrosse and giving it to them a little bit when she's old enough. So great league that we have here. It's a, you know, a great day here and you know, just Looking forward to seeing some good lacrosse here in this B Championship final. So you've got Winter Dockstater out there as well. Offensive end now London finally getting their first touch here deep in the offensive end. They'll swing it around to the top. And it's Brendan Campbell. Campbell backhand pass goes awry and that is going to belong to the chaos. And with your last 
description about you know the way the generations are moving along i want to say congratulations to you as a new grandfather it appears that we'll be sharing the pitch or the rink for another generation in the shiskowski household hey yeah yeah two and a half months old and uh blessed with having a grandson now for your first one so uh, I don't know how many we're going to have uh, after this. But, well, it's uh, not we. You know. I don't know where you're getting the we, <laughs> all right? You're, you're just a, an innocent bystander, all right, or a casual observer. You've already done your damage, <laughs> yes, okay? Sir. So <laughs> now it's your son. He'll be doing a little more net minding now at home that's than, true. That's uh, true. than that's he usually true. does that on the road. So yeah. congratulations Thank to you. you guys, and that's got to be a big thrill for you. For sure. Yeah, a great change in perspective but a, and, a, and a pleasant one. So thank oh, you. Oh, so are you saying now you got a kid that you can just spoil and then send him back <laughs> That's home? That's right. It's, right, I got you. The great do-over, I call I it. Got, the great do-over. you. Well, listen, I won't lie. I look forward <laughs> to doing the exact same thing. Okay, that is the role of a grandparent, and it's well-earned. London looking to move it up as the Molly's not able to connect on that one, and it'll stay in bounds. Good job to corral it now by Campbell. He'll hold on to it and they'll reset now with another Campbell. So Brendan Campbell, Sean Campbell out there. No Andy Campbell or it'd be a whole lot of soup going on. Instead we've got a whole lot of lacrosse in the offensive end. Well, and maybe the other two camels get overshadowed a little bit by Big Brother, you know, and this is their... Well, he's these huge These guys are great anyway. ball he's players huge, themselves, anyway. you know, but, uh, you know, seeing Brendan Campbell, and there's Sean Campbell with his chance and just misses, but, you know, their chance to hear and say... Well, some, something to be said with being able to play with your family. Yeah, that's right. And I think that's that right. that's, a, that's a, a blessing for sure as... And it is a great lacrosse family, those Campbells. I've known them for, for years and been able to watch them play. So kind of happy to see them out here too. Well, no, no offense to Andy. I, I find Andy to be a better person than a lacrosse player, if that means anything. And he's a good lacrosse player for sure. So nice to see the family spreading their wings. And the more Campbells around, the better. That shot, a weak one deflected. And the chaos defense has been outstanding. Keep an eye out. That one to Joey Zabo. Dumps it wide open and beauty finish. So Zabo with the feed to Foresight for his second of the game. And we've got ourselves a 3-0 lead for Milton. Yeah, what transition. We saw a lot of that in the A finals. And like I said, these are two A caliber teams here now. London's a little bit shy on their rosters, and that may play a factor here, especially if Milton's going to be moving the ball the way they are. Well, you can see making them work, just two subs available to, to London. And that will, as we go on here, of course, be a factor, I imagine. But the chaos have been just that for London in this early first quarter as Milton has been dominant so far and has had... The possession a majority of the time here. Looking for the cutter inside underhand. Great save. It's kicked back out, and London now will turn it up. I think that shoulder hose there with the ball and just a oh, great strip, but nice save by Jonesy in the London net there, but they just had trouble getting it out of their own zone. Ollie's just didn't have that sense of urgency there, weren't able to collect it and get it moving the other way so the chaos now will go back to work with their offense spreading the field one on one duck it in trying to go over good save made and that's going to be a crease violation yeah ryan jones is he's going to have his work cut out of the, in this game the goaltender for london and see he's going to start quarterback in this and bringing the ball up and He's a guy that's, that's a veteran in this league and is an outstanding goalie in his own right. And he's going to have his work cut out for him here today. As even some of the regular long poles for London uh, are, were not available for this game. So he's going to have uh, his, ta his, his work cut out for him. It's a tall task. Well, you know, in the field game, the goaltender, the position a little more prevalent and important. They play more of an active role 
than they do in, say, box, for example. So you're usually your quarterback or your leader is your netminder. The play is in front of them, and a good job by the chaos as their stick work outstanding. As oh, Jackson Martin just not letting Brendan <laughs> – Brendan Campbell uh, get away from him, causes a turnover, but a little bit of uh, extracurriculars behind the field, at, uh, behind the play, cause for a turnover and gives the ball right back to London. Well, extracurriculars in lacrosse, I can't imagine, <laughs> Mark. That's something, something new as trying to pull his way and get closer to that net is Davis Prince. And finally, a good job by London to get on the board. Well, I don't know how many times on the score sheet uh, London's had 17 from 11 in uh, this season, but now uh, 17's on the sidelines and Davis Prince, uh, is, you know, he's gonna be called upon to do a little bit more of that too and drive to the net and he did a nice job there and got London on the score sheet. So Prince with his first of the game, it's a 3-1 lead now for Milton here in the second championship final. This, of course, the B final, and that's to take nothing away from those two letters A and B. Of course, the Orangeville Generals put a cap on a perfect season with a win over the Six Nations Stallions to claim the gold. Turn over there will send the chaos the other way. Nicky Martino doing a good job defensively, and he'll flip in now the offense. So we've had almost four seasons of weather in a game in a bit, Mark, and we'll keep it like this, a little wind, but the sunshine out. Great pass and not able to finish on the run there was Forsyth as he has been hounding around that net this entire game, but possession will stay right here with the chaos. Well, it was good to see number 47 for the chaos back out there, number Richard Imus, who's down getting a little bit of treatment behind the uh, the bench earlier in the uh, in the quarter, but good to see him back out there and taking a shift. Looks looks no worse for wear. Well, Richard Imus, of course, if you if you don't know, one of the fastest players out there in this field league, one of the fastest in the box league. He is a, a kid that can run. He's tenacious. His defense is ferocious, and he too, one of the Milton graduates that played. Their minor lacrosse in Milton has now branched out. Quick shot, and that underhand will stay here with the chaos. Good job. They had three players all closest to the ball there as it went out of bounds. And they'll reset it at the top. Well, and Kent Radburn fired that one, and he's got one heck of a shot. The only problem is sometimes we don't know where it's going, and so maybe that's part of their strategy <laughs> is to cover that end line when he's shooting. Sometimes you got to take out the mascot. Great oh, save great there. Oh, great save, Jonesy. <laughs> Jones almost got knocked back <laughs> yeah, on the force of that shot, but a great job to keep it from going between the pipes, and chaos now will reset. On the run, that one well wide of the mark. And again, that art, you in, in box, you, you get a little more of a chance based on the way the offense flows to set your feet and really let shots go out here in the field. Those shots tend to be on the move in motion. And what a save <laughs> by Jones. And on the run, so a little more challenging as far as accuracy goes for these players. Well, that, that six-foot-long pole makes such a big difference, you know, that, that space inside you think you have is taken away with an extra three feet on the stick. And some of these guys just amaze me with their stick skills with, with, uh, with the long poles that they have. They are just absolutely incredible with what and they And as an can offensive do. player, it takes some getting used to when you think you've beaten a defender and he just reaches back and manages to get your stick when you thought you were by him. That pass knocked down by a long stick. Speaking of which, and Zach Sanders fighting for it. Possession belongs to Milton as it has a majority of this quarter. Yeah, Zach Sanders did a nice job knocking it down, but then 
a little interference call gave it back to the chaos but London getting the ball back and seeing if they can turn this transition into a scoring opportunity and they won't because they'll run out of time as 15 minutes in the books three to one to score in favor of the Milton chaos it's the B final playing for gold here at the Iceland sports field back here as we get set for the second quarter B final against the Milton chaos leading London, 3-1 to one the score here as off the draw. That's Richard Imus. You can tell by that stride. He dumps it off nicely and right to work to the bounce shot finish. So a good job off the faceoff. Chase Forsythe's been the recipient his third of the game. And great job by Richard Imus in transition. Yeah, quick strike. That makes a big difference there. You know, like they two-goal lead, three-goal lead. You know, it doesn't sound like a lot, but especially when it's an early strike like that, that can uh, come back to haunt London because they're going to need every break they can get, I think, this game here. And every goal is going to be a huge deficit for them. Well, it is, and right now they've been outplayed now for a quarter and a bit. As, again, ball loose in that center circle, fished out, and it's Imus. So it's funny how that happens, where the ball is. Richard Imus is usually hawking around somewhere, and Joey Zabo will filter out on the left side, and the chaos will go to work. So as we have the challenges with the roster change, we think number three might be Joel uh eric snyder sorry so based on the the game sheet so we, if we get a couple of these names wrong we uh we apologize to the goal scorers so are you saying that eric <laughs> snyder's wearing number three that's what i've got but uh we're gonna check at halftime to make sure of that correction well you know partner you're supposed to let a guy know after <laughs> the first goal not after the third that so foresight's been getting all that credit right Meanwhile, Snyder's been the man doing the dirty work, so we're going to give Snyder his three goals. And Mr. Foresight, we're going to have to pass you along as Damali's now to work on offense. Yeah, we'll get our, we'll get our statistician on that at halftime. Well, you're supposed to be the statistician <laughs> and the color commentary and, and a number of other things, okay? So stick around as we get a chance to chat with Commissioner of the League, Joel Furman. We'll get the whole inside inside on what it takes to put together an event and is this event running smoother than last year or the year before? So just a prelude to what we might be discussing as the chaos now continue their work in the offensive end. If you see someone out there that you recognize that I don't feel free, I won't be offended at all. Uh, sometimes I'm playing a little catch up here too. My good man, but uh, I think you're the, just a nice guy. <laughs> try to be nice, okay? <laughs> well, you know, it's a tribute to the chaos. They've got so many guys, and I think they have a couple guys sitting each game, so they might have to switch a few jerseys around. But, you know, that's a tribute to the program that they run. Uh, you know, and shout out to, to head coach uh, Jeff Snyder and Albert Rahanek and, and the work that they do and the passion that they bring to the game and everything that they do for the game of lacrosse is – you know, just, just great to see and how they get back. And, you know, guys lining up to play for this team. Mitchell Robertson aired one out there wide of the mark, but he sure stepped into that one. And the Mollies now regain possession, trying to lean in. Good help. That's a whole lot of long stick on you, forcing that errant pass, and it'll go out of bounds, belong to Milton. So Milton's done a real good job in closing up the attack in the middle of the area around the net. And they haven't allowed London to do a whole lot. Certainly haven't been able to complete too many interior passes. They, the long sticks seem to be everywhere the ball is. Chance to wind up underhand. That one will 
Stay right here, wide of the mark. So a 4-1 lead for the Chaos, looking to add to that total. Some nice subtle rotation there between the middies and trying to create some open space, but as they maybe pick up the pace here a little bit, there'll be a little bit more opening up and that nice shot. look from outside, but well defended. Steered aside and another good save by Jones, he's so far really kept his team in this. And good passing by the Chaos, not able to connect, trying to track that down, and good job to keep it in bounds. Those are really a lot of the little things that are important in this field game, and a beauty shot. So how about that work effort? When you talk about doing some things right, Oh, saves the ball. Uh, it was Kyle Starrett, I think, again, at saving the ball from going from out of bounds and making sure he didn't he wasn't stepping out of bounds when he was playing the ball. And uh, it just goes in and, and fires a nice low shot that Jonesy just couldn't corral. So a great job of hustling over. Gets that loose ball before it goes out of bounds. Sets things up and pockets one short side. Looks like we're going to have a London timeout. We are going to hope the wind settles, take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Set to go after the London timeout. And I think a good timeout, Mark, in the chaos with the momentum so far here. And they've been dominant in this first quarter. Not such a bad thing with, with a shortened bench for London. you got to give them credit for even getting to this game. The fact that they're out there working hard, second game of the day, with a shortened bench, says a lot about their dedication. Going with the shovel, great save there made. And now the chaos will collect it. One pass, move it up, long pole to long pole. When you get a lot of these teams, you know, you look at their rosters, and yeah, they might be called Milton Chaos or Orangeville Generals or or whatnot, but they're they're a mix. They might have a core of players from that center, but they'll bring in their buddies or guys they played with. You know, London, it's so far out there, a little bit on the fringe. And predominantly, a lot of these guys are London boys, and for them to stick around, like, I mean, that's, to see them here in a championship game again, really, you know, restores your faith in that team concept. That they're not just a roster, they're a team of guys that have played. And what a fire off the post. <laughs> I think, I think uh, Jones <laughs> heard that whistle by his ear well, I think and off the post. Joey Zabo <laughs> unloaded oh. that shot and rung it right off the post. But just to finish my thought, it's really good to see these London boys, you know, sticking together and having a great time out here playing lacrosse. Well, I think that's the that's the beauty of the game. And once you sort of get bit by the lacrosse bug, it never goes away. And the camaraderie that it brings a lot of times, and I'm sure you could say the same, some of the guys that you, you played with are still your friends to this day. So some 50 plus years later, you can still reminisce about the time you spent playing this sport. And if you're lucky enough, you may have a, a child or two that's played and you know, potentially a future grandchild that might be in the ranks as well. So it's 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 really important that you take a lot of the good things that come in life and enjoy those and good competition here. Trying to duck in and doing everything in his power, but that's going to be a crease violation. So once again, the chaos do a good job with some collective defense. Yeah, really not giving them a lot of room there. And Davis Prince had to try and tiptoe around the crease, but just couldn't stay outside before he released that ball. But good effort. Just came up a little short there on that one. A whole lot of tiptoeing from the Prince. And the chaos will set things up. And they'll work it around left side. So you've got Eric Snyder as number three. Three, I've got him as number 11. Well, that'd that be correct? Richard Hahn. That's the, the timeless wonder Richard Hahn okay. out there. Uh, 
And, you know, and he's a, he's a guy that's, you know, you get him around the crease, and he's just about money for a goal, though. But So he, maybe with the veteran, he said, I'm taking 11, and then everybody else had the dominoes after Well, that. you got to go with the seniority <laughs> thing, right. right? And that's that's just the way it is. That backhand pass flipped up. Good job to corral it and protect it. Snyder. Again with a long pole on him. They'll swing it back to the top, set things up. And we got Tyrus Rahanna kind of limping off over to the sidelines. So we'll yeah, see uh, if he misses any substantial time in this game. And that would be a loss for, for the chaos as he tends to quarterback a lot of the play from behind the net. Hopefully just shaking up a bit and not anything serious. You, you don't know. Sometimes a little tough when you play a game and your body gets warm and then you cool down a bit and then you got to go again in the same kind of climate where it's cold. You don't have that benefit of the, an indoor facility where you can warm up quick or stay warm. Mind you, I say that. These are young men. They should be able to handle it no problem. Different story for an old guy like me, even a young guy like you, Mark. <laughs> or maybe we're headed uh. to the same senior citizen's home at the same time. <laughs> you got a grandkid, so you're okay. <laughs> that shot goes off a chaos player, and it's picked up now, and London will try to move it up. In some trouble, though. Good job to get it back, and they'll get some space now and a chance to work it into the offensive end. Jones is going to leg it up just a bit and look for some assistance, and I don't see a whole lot of moving. For London, and that one's floated up, and they will get it into the offensive end. No, you get a lot of guys, you know, great athletes and great lacrosse players, but they're playing in some different positions, you know. So what became automatic in, in regular season games now takes a little extra time and communication, and there's that hesitancy, as you can see. You know, nobody's moving and, you know, trying to quarterback that. Hey, step over. I'm going to lead you with a pass. Um, you know, if they get a little pressure on them, that's not going to – that's not going to – not going to work so much in the later stages of the game. I'm going to check here, and I don't think that was the first half whistle. I think that was just just trying to find out what exactly the call was. If so, the, yeah, it, so it looks like just a timeout out. call. Yep. So, and I think when you... Look at that! It looks like the timeout would have been called by Milton. Now, does that does that strike you as a bit odd? We've been we've been stuck on this four-one score for a while, and I'd say that sorry five-one. Well, if it was a dead ball, that could be a, a Milton timeout, but it's in the in London's offensive zone, so I'm, I'm I'm tending to think it was London's second timeout of the of the half. Yeah, so they're getting awarded the ball, so that would have been a London timeout. Let's regroup here, see if they can capitalize on this possession. Well, you figure you're going to have to be strategic with a short bench. Chance trying to work in. Good double team by the Chaos. Swing it back out and around. Off one knee. Good stick skills to hold on to that. Trying to lean in. Dump off. Quick pass underhand. So a nice job with some good interior passing. Looks like Brendan Campbell's going to be the recipient with his first of the game. Much needed goal for London. Well, it was a nice job by Davis Prince. You know, he kind of you know, showed off some nice stick skills, as you as you had mentioned, and, you know, faked a little shot and found Brendan there wide open and nice feed, and Brendan made no mistake. Well, it's, it's a real treat to see some of these guys when they make the transition from the box game to the field game and what kind of skill set they can use. Is that one scooped up by the chaos, right to the attack, dump off, kick back and a bad pass will give it back to London. Just a chance for some of these guys to really put their skills on display with a little more room. London now a chance to go back to back. Great, weaving through. Good job on the close up as defensively the chaos shut that down now and a chance here to get it and they do. One pass and skipped up into the offensive end so a good job there as far as efficiency goes and now the chaos will look to attack but that pass well wide of the mark as I think Joel Snyder wasn't quite on the mark with that 
Just a little wide right. So surprisingly, when you, you look at what we've seen so far, Mark, we've seen Milton pretty much dominate as far as possession goes, but yet when you look at the score, it's only a 5-2 game, and you got to figure that London's still in this one. Oh, for sure. Well, <laughs> another shout-out to Ryan Jones about that. You know, I think he's, he's probably... Uh, saved about three goals just on his own with that, but uh, you know, kudos to the to the no quit on the guys that are on the field and they get within another goal here. How about just that? as we're talking about it, Winter Dockstader, the man working in close quarters, picks up his first of the game, and you called it right, Mark, as a big goal there. And I think if you're if you're London, you the main thing is to sort of just keep things close, keep it in striking distance. You you figure that fatigue may come into play in this fourth quarter, but if you can keep it tight, then you got got a chance. Well, yeah, the fatigue probably matters more if it's a, if if you're down by a lot, and probably a little bit less when you're uh, you're you're in a closer game. You know, the adrenaline will probably take over a little bit more in that case. So, you know, kudos to London here and keeping this close because. You know, the guys on the field, they're no slouches. Even with Campbell on the sideline and missing a few of their regulars, you know, they've got some good players here, and they're starting to find a little bit of chemistry, it might look like. And they're going, will this get out of bounds? And yes, it does. And it's going to be a London opportunity here so to bring it down the field. Very uncharacteristic of Joey Zabo. Took his eye off the ball there and wasn't able to catch that pass. Had, a, had he held on to it, would have been a glorious chance, but... Oh, that That's was quarter time there. So first half is in the books. It's a 5-3 game in favor of the Milton Chaos. 30 minutes left to crown another champ here. Championship Saturday. We'll be back. As we get set for third quarter action here. 5-3 game in favor of the Milton Chaos. Leading London in this B Championship Final. Luckily enough to be joined up here in the booth by League Commissioner and, of course, one of the best officials in the game right now and Mr. Joel Furman. And glad you are here to join me and I'm glad to be part of this event. And tell me because the one question I really wanted to ask you was after doing this event for, for a few years now, you what are you still having the same challenges or, or, or do new ones keep coming up or do you seem to find a way from my perspective for the event to keep getting better each year? Well, uh, this year was a little bit of a different struggle. The, the league representatives decided to vote on, uh, they voted on and decided a new playoff format. So uh, this year we have two games going on at the same time for the championship game. We have the championship and the bronze medal going on in behind us. So, um, for myself, trying to be in two different places at the same time, it's a little bit difficult. But uh, other than that, everyone seems in good spirits. Uh, today went well. The, the weather's great, and yeah, it's. Now, what was what was the what was the initial idea to change the format? Were they did they think it was dragging on a bit uh, in in the past, or did they want to speed it up, or what was the what was the thought process behind that? So the weekend uh, prior to this one is what we call the uh, seeding weekend, where uh, we try to get more meaningful games between uh, close opponents. So we didn't want the one versus eight or one versus nine happening a second time. Uh, so we had teams one through three play each other, four, five, six play each other, and then seven, eight, nine play each other. So, um, but yeah, they. I guess we tried that for a few years. The boys uh, wanted to try something a little different, so they changed it up this year, and uh, this is what we have. So, well, hats off to you, Joel, for you know taking some of that feedback and and, and putting it into action. A lot of times, what'll happen is that'll fall on deaf ears, and you know if it's the players talking, the coaches talking, and I know in this league, a lot of the players are the coaches. So to 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 give that kind of feedback, and you know this is this is one of the 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 sides of the sport where weather's a factor. 
Yes. Right? And and I know planning an event like this, as you see, beautiful over the shoulder and a much-needed goal for the chaos to add to their lead. Unfortunately, I don't think Jonesy saw all that shot, so I didn't, didn't see too much of a reaction from that, unfortunately. So. I don't think so either. So... But I mean, you you have to figure. I mean, you're you're not able to do anything about the weather, so you kind of have to play through. What kind of sort of option B and C do you guys have if, say, the weather stopped the game, or if you just weren't able to play? Well, lucky, lucky for my tenure that we haven't had to deal with that. Um, I remember when I first joined this league, 19 years ago as a player. Uh, we used to play on grass for the Provincials. Uh, there was one year in October, I think we got five feet of snow down in the Niagara region. Um, it all melted that week and then we had to play on a grass field that weekend. And uh, we, I think we were playing in Port Colborne under two inches of water on a grass field. So um, ever since that date, uh, we've I think the league made a mandate that we always play on turf. So. Right, right. Well, that's a, that's a tough lesson, but a valuable one, obviously. And good to see that. That there hasn't been a reoccurrence of that, and I say that a lot of the players that we see in in, in this league and the senior side, of course, crossover players that play box lacrosse as well, yep. and it's really good to see the cross. But let let me ask you not only about the crossover for the players, but some of the officials. We've got Correct. we've got some of the best officials in the box game here doing field. What kind of uh, transition does it take to go from one to the other uh what does it take it doesn't take much you just take a course to to be honest with you but um certainly like the stuff you pick up like the the habits and that they help the the game in both sports like i know we have uh two gentlemen on this field right now who've refed uh in the nll and uh you can see it here like they're the top dogs in this league like the, their presence like the players and coaches uh, they can tell like when these guys are in in the building, so to speak. So um, it certainly doesn't hurt, but yeah. well, I think that I think the having that respect factor, absolutely of the officials, I think makes a big difference just in the in the way the game's played overall. And players aren't so worried about the call they're not going to get, just worried about playing. As chaos do a good job of closing that up again and. The opportunities for London have been few and far between, and they've only maybe gotten one or two passes off or one shot. Zabo dumps it down low. Go to the bounce. Good save by Jones. Going to be a race to that back line, and it's picked up by the chaos. Oh, we have a man down here. So it looks like there is. I'm not sure if he may have tumbled into that post there or if he just went down hard, but the early movement's a good indicator that He's going to be okay. Now, what's this, what's the selection process like for the officials in field? Is it similar to that of box, or where are you in charge of that, or where, where does that fall, and who do we blame? Uh, <laughs> one for sorry, unfortunately, like uh, the top dogs in the province, uh, they they enjoy refing the Kufla, uh, the Canadian Univers University Field Lacrosse League. Right. Um, it's if, if there's lots of games going on that day and we get the the leftovers, but uh, our referee, or sorry, our official in charge, Mark Sands, who's uh, standing at center here, uh, he's done a good job of getting us the the best officials he can. So, well, I've had the pleasure of watching both you and Mark Sands in your career as it's gone on, and I think you both have been a Delight not only to know, but just to watch your progress. Good interior pass and great save, Jones. Rebound loose inside, picked up by London. And a good job to elude a couple of defenders in Campbell and create a little bit of breathing room now as they get it up over the timeline. And I'm, only, I'm only putting you on the spot with that whole officials thing, Joel, because I know that, you know, amongst that there are numerous other things that – go along with your job and you don't have just one job it seems like you got three or four yep. floating around and in different capacities of course Joel uh, uh, an outstanding official in his own right with the oh. NLL and the ALL so to take that time out and 
I know you spend now a lot of time on the minor side of things as I believe either one or two of your kids are involved in the game. Yep, I have a six-year-old son. You may have seen him running around on the sidelines here during the, as the games are going on. And then uh, I'm coaching him most of the summer uh, with the U9 box team in Hamilton. And my daughter also plays uh, U11 girls field as well. So. Oh, so you're not actually involved in the game a whole lot. No, no. <laughs> not at all? Might have one or two free nights a week. One or two free nights a week that you're allowed to actually drive them to lacrosse. Yeah. Right. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm looking and I see a good-looking young man as he's very close by to us, much better looking than you. No offense, Joel, That's but right. offense. Gets it from as, his mother. All right, excellent. He's got a good haircut going on, and he's not willing to share a whole lot, but that's okay. We're going to work with him on that as he enjoys some of the lacrosse action. And I, I don't know if you brought the sunshine, Joel, or what, but a little windy. But other than that, we can live without the raindrops and continue the way it goes here. But we... With the exception of that goal added by the chaos, I think that London may be struggling a bit to kind of find their legs here in this third quarter. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, London, they've been a perennial A contender in this league, and uh, it's sad when they don't make it to the A loop that they're all of a sudden missing a few bodies. So it's, yeah, well it's unfortunate, but hey, that's... Well, that's one of the challenges you, you, you have seen on a regular basis, and... You know, let's let's be clear. It's different when you got to play in the elements than when you're playing inside a nice warm arena. Jones again, and he's the reason why this isn't a six or seven goal lead for the chaos. And getting some guys out, it, it's a bit challenging. It's also a difficult time of the year where there are a lot of things going on, whether it be kids with school and other things as the chaos add to their total on a great running sidearm there. And now the score is 8-3. Yeah, no, it is a difficult time of year with the NLL training camp starting up. You see some of our top-end players uh, miss this weekend. Uh, Orangeville's face-off man, Tyler Halls, uh, he unfortunately is, uh, well, not unfortunately, he's, he's got a good shot right now. He's uh, in training camp with the Rochester Nighthawks just up the road in Brampton here. Uh, they're usually missing a few more bodies, but this year, they were able to make it, so it's good for them. It helped out. Well, you like you said, you know, you, you have that same challenges with the players and with the officials as well, and, of course, you never hold it against anyone no. who's getting better and, and progressing. And, you know, in the Arena Lacrosse League, we're not mad at you when you can't do a game because you've got to do an NLL game. We certainly don't, you know, talk bad about you, at least not to your face, so... <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's nope. a that's a good thing. Yes. But I mean, I think it's all about the progression and, and, and getting the right guys and to see players that have worked their way up through the ranks, whether it be playing the field here or, or playing the box with the all or or that sort of thing or, or MSL for that for that, you know. It, it seems to me that it's a positive thing to watch them grow and watch them then get get better and then eventually play at the top level. Absolutely. Like uh, there's a number of guys who've got their start out, sorry, got the, their chance in the NLL and uh, what did they do the weeks leading up to training camp? They were out here playing with these guys. I know I can remember uh, about 10 years ago when Dane Smith was a young buck playing with this London Mollies team and uh, look at him now tell you it's funny how things come full circle and it, it really shows the importance of you know the the kind of leagues that you that stay alive because of guys like you Joel the, the the time that you put in and the dedication and Lord knows you're not doing it for the money we know that no nope, nope. so it's it's just the fact that you've decided to give back to the sport that you've enjoyed so much and you know look forward to hopefully being around long enough to see your kids Enjoy that on a beauty backhand finish as taking matters into his own hands, I tell you. Get you the goal score there in a moment, but when you... So Rich Hahn has just been a handful offensively. Tack another one on for the chaos, and I'm not sure that 
as this mountain gets higher and higher for the chaos and higher and higher, steeper and steeper for London, if they're going to be able to come back just based on being a little short on the bench. Chaos, though, have done a good job of working the ball around. Their substitutions have been great. They've kept fresh legs out there this entire game, and they've sort of taken a stranglehold here in this third quarter. I think right now uh, Ryan Jones is also battling the sun. I can see him crouching down, trying to get his visor tilted a little bit. Uh, the sun's directly behind us at the moment, so uh, if he can get through this third quarter here, he might, we might see a turnaround in the fourth when uh, it's in Milton's eyes. So. Well, he made a great save right there on a slide to keep that ball out of the net. As London now trying to work their way in, but there just doesn't seem to be a whole lot in the chaos. Certainly not in a very giving mood as they closed up shop and will move it up long pole and set it up again offensively. And that's where they spent the majority of this third quarter. And we also have a flag down situation here. It looks like London's going to be going to the box. So slashing penalty. Making things a little more complicated for themselves, of course. And those are the kind of penalties you get when you're tired. And it'll give the chaos a chance now to add to their tally. 9-4, the lead here. I am with the league commissioner, Joel Furman. Also, of course, top-notch official in both the NLL, the ALL, and wherever he happens to be. One of the main coordinators. And I do like the fact that you brought in a lot of lacrosse people i'd like to say whether it be officials or or coaches or just guys to help you run the league a bit of a change up there oh. as it got deflected but kyle starrett will add his third to the total i like that you you brought in you know you, you bring lacrosse people in to do lacrosse and you know knowing you don't have to worry so much about the dedication and effort that that the knowledge is there and You've pretty much been working with a similar volunteer crew for the last few years. Yep. No, uh, we've had a bunch of great people in this league. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to work with them over the years, and I meet different people and try and bring them in and help make this league a little bit better, like yourself and uh, Mark over there. If I asked you guys to come give us a hand this weekend, and you uh, jumped at the opportunity, and I, we really appreciate you guys coming out here. And looks like we got another penalty coming. So another penalty coming, and quite frankly, it's a it's a, a an honor and a pleasure to get asked. It means you're doing something right if you're okay to have both me and Mark up in the booth. We have been known to banner back and forth, but great partner to work with. And London now will get that back on the shot, and you can just see based on the body language, Joel, there just isn't a whole lot of fight left in the dog in London as. They just seem to be wearing down a bit, and it's hard to get those legs going when you got a team like Milton that keeps coming at you, and that looks like that will be the end of the third quarter. And that is the case, and it is a 9-4 game in favor of the Milton Chaos looking for the gold on the B side. I want to thank Joel Furman, the commissioner, of course, of the Field Lacrosse League here in the province of Ontario for chiming in and keeping us informed. And we want to wish you the best of luck. I look forward to seeing you coming up with the Arena Lacrosse League and the National Lacrosse League schedule, seeing you out on the floor. Congratulations for putting on a great event. And we look forward one more quarter to go here from the Iceland Sports Field. We'll be back. <gasps> Locked and loaded as we get set for the final 15 minutes here of this championship B final, provincial final of the men's senior lacrosse championships here from the Iceland sports fields in Mississauga, Ontario. Lance Wynn, Mark Shutkowski, glad to have you joining us again for the second time. Glad to have Commissioner Joel Furman up to give us some insight as London now. Trying to go back to work here, and you got to figure, and I want to correct it, 10-3 the score, not 10-4. So London's going to have to put together a bit of a run here. And you can see, we mentioned, Joel mentioned prior to the end of 
that third quarter. The sun going to be a factor down on the end to our left which is the chaos end, so goaltending-wise, going to be tough to see as they work it up over the timeline. But if you're Milton, you're in the best possible position you could be in. Well, exactly. You know, that was a, that third quarter watching from the, you know, beside you guys there, and it was kind of the Richard Hahn show there scoring, uh, you know, two, two goals, two assists, you know, in the first four goals of that five-goal run for Milton there. Now they, there's no rush for them. They can use the clock and this is a possession game uh, you can utilize here in field lacrosse. It's, I'll always talk about a shot clock and field lacrosse eventually. There's none in this game here right now. So, you know, there's there's got to be no rush by Milton here. Sun or no sun, you know, don't give London a chance to, to get on any kind of a run here. Joey Zabel trying to get ahead of steam going. He's going to duck in the middle on the run. Sidearm bullet, Joey Zabo. So Zabo on the move. First goal of this fourth quarter belongs to the chaos. And Joey Zabo aired one out towards the end of the third quarter. This one made the adjustment and found the mark. And that's just some good lacrosse there being able to put that ball right where you want it while you're on the run. Oh yeah, I don't care if that nets 6x6 six six or 10x10, ten ten, that's just an accurate shot. And, and you know, I'm thinking, as it's just I'm talking about running the clock, he had a lane, had a, a shot he thought he could take and he capitalized. It was a beautiful shot by Zabo. Well, you could see him, he just got a bit of a running start as Richard Imus goes down hard and there's not going to be a flag thrown on the play, but tripped up a bit there and if you know Richard Imus spend some time on the turf a bit whether it be in field or box as he'll find his way off on a hop lots of guys ready to go on out there chaos will set things up as they are in complete control here and you look at what these two teams have done in the regular season and you you, you figure that really that moniker uh, of an A championship and a B championship really isn't really fair when you look at it because it isn't really a step down. Right, yeah, especially with these two teams. As, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast that London was in the A championship last year, you know, and came short against a strong London team, which is uh, which won the bronze in the A this year. So... You know, there's just so many good teams in this league now. And that's, you know, it's again, you know, we call Joel the commissioner, but he's so much more than that. He's a publicist. He's a recruiter. He's game day operations webmaster. He's done so much for this league behind the scenes for these guys to play. And the competition level has been incredible. And it's, it's you know, when you're talking about, you know, some NL guys come out for the workout and, and missing a few maybe in the, championship day which is unfortunate but you know those guys are willing to come out and play and that just elevates um, other people around them as well. Well that goes to show you I mean if you're already an outstanding player and you want to continue to get better it's just only natural you want to play with the best guys best competition and to come out and make sure that they get a run here in this league in some way shape or form really says a lot about what Joel and his group have done to like you said elevate the quality and caliber of play out here these are some of the best players in the sport and again there are only a limited number of spots in the National Lacrosse League so where does everybody else play because there's a whole lot of other players and this league of course one of the outlets that's able to showcase how great some of these kids can be. Wow, well, right, and you see it all winter long in the Arena Lacrosse League. And, you know, the number of players, you know, and some of them, no disservice to any of them. Some of them just, you know, the, a professional uh, career is just not, for lacrosse is just not in their best interest. They got other profession, uh, parts of their profession or their lives or their family that they've got to take care of, and they take priority, and, you know, <laughs> And they're great lacrosse players, and we're happy to see him out here in more of the local leagues. So great to see it going on. Happy to be here on a beautiful day and, and working this, this broadcast. So Chance here trying to weave in, and that one steered aside. We'll stay right here 
and belong to the chaos. And oh, I think Radburn paid paid a price for that scoring opportunity. It's, you know, he kind of bent over a little bit. I think he may have taken a stick off the thigh or stick or a two. Stick or two, stick yeah. Or two. <laughs> he was right in the middle of traffic there, and they worked him over pretty good. Yeah, uh, he'll he'll be back. He'll be back for more. <laughs> well, I I think you could say that about any of these guys out there. If you played this sport for a long time, you you are the master coming back for more. Okay, as yeah. There's always a whole lot of giving and a whole lot of taking. Always the beauty of the game. As Jones now going to look for some help, and this is one of the, in my opinion, one of the underrated aspects of this field game is the importance of your goaltender he really is and we said this before the quarterback but he's so pivotal in getting that ball from the defensive end into the offensive end he's the starting point i wouldn't even mean you know i don't know if he's got the energy to do it but i've always even liked the goalies going for a run down the field and if they get the opportunity taking a shot those are kind of fun to watch too but uh, they get kind of chopped up as they're running off the field, too. So I don't know if he's interested in doing that here today in this game. I'm not quite sure he's <laughs> going to showcase that, but you're, you're right, and we have seen that, and you, you just won't see that in the box game. So definitely adds a wrinkle. Chaos in tight, and that one off the side of the net. So a chance there for Han, not able to park it in the back, and London now will move it up into the offensive end. Molly's looking for anything. I just think they have just kind of flat out run out of gas here. Mark, I don't think it's no lack of trying, no lack of effort. It's tough when you're out there the entire time. And when you're playing field, it's not like box where you can go up, down, or you filter in. The possession changes so quickly. You can be sitting on that sideline taking a cold breeze, and then next thing you got to jump out there and go full speed. So... Not the easiest thing to do. No, the best he can do is kind of rotate, uh, you know, the middies, the long poles, and the attacks. Uh, they got enough athletes that they can do that, and they did a little bit of that in the second and the third. But, you know, that you lose the cohesion that you have for the guys in those regular positions to save some gas. But, yeah, it's been a tough, tough day, uh, tough game for them. Um, kudos for them. They, they still got possession here and still trying to run an offense and get a – Get a, a shot at putting the ball in the net. They got a lot of pride and nice, nice move by Sean Campbell there. How about <laughs> so. Sean Campbell? Nice little quick first step there. And no offense to his brother Andy, but that's quicker than any I've seen <laughs> Andy pull off. Tell you that on that move. And finally add another. Yeah, a bit of a drought here. That's our first goal here in the second half. So. So that's going to need a lot more that's, of that. That's, that's a nice way to put it, Mark. <laughs> a bit of a drought. But there's some thirsty guys out there, let me tell you. So we do have a, looks like, let me check my counter. I got 11-4. Where are you yeah, at, Yeah, that's sir? what I got okay. too, my friend. If my counter's right more than twice in a game, something's a little odd. So that's good there as... London now will control. Yeah, nice play by Robertson there to box out uh, the chaos player and pick up the Lucy off the draw. And hey, who knows? You know, get a couple possessions here, win a couple of draws. They can uh, go home saying they gave this a battle all the way to the end. Well, you can see if London's got one little last gas attempt here or some good defense there by Milton as they close up. That prime scoring area, that goes off a defender, will stay in bounds. Good tip away and great job by the chaos. And I think that's just legs right there, as you can see. Some fatigue starting to set in. And now Milton's going to control things. Lucas Rain out there at the top. And in no hurry. So lucky enough that the weather has held off 
so to speak, at least as far as the rain goes. We can live with the wind, and, but it's at least good to be dry. I should be on the other side of you, though, Big Mark, so that you could block off some of this something. But I think you wanted that piece of real listen, estate you got there yeah, earlier in the day, see, Lance. You know, that's, uh... And I caught that <laughs> gloating look on your face, too. So. Oh, we got a little bit of a scrum going there. Zach Sanders, maybe... Uh, I've mean, never seen guess. Zach to to, to kind of lose his temper like that, but uh, I certainly wouldn't want to mix it up with him anyway. He is a big boy. Looks like it's Joel Snyder that's with him. but Well, I think at this stage of the game, I don't yeah. think that really anything more than that is really worth it. No, I think on a different day and different circumstances that that wouldn't happen, but... Uh, the human element will creep in, you know? It it's does, and you, that's the thing about lacrosse. It's a its a tough sport and a fine line sometimes between, you know, evening things out and, and retaliation. Yeah, so... Uh, but a good piece of officiating to keep that exactly where it was. It'll not escalate any further, and now the chaos will have possession in the offensive end. So if I got those calls right, it looked like it was uh, the, Zach uh, was was responding to a cross check from Mr. Snyder and took it a little bit far because I think I think he got an injection out of the game if I um, read those uh, those calls right and, and Snyder's got himself two minutes. So Sanders out of the game and I think three minutes attached to that so, so kind of a little excitement here to yeah, <laughs> in the so fourth because we're not getting much goal scoring. Well, we're not. Is it <laughs> chaos? Chaos now have sort of put things in check here and have decided that pace is going to be the way to go, and it should as they've got a commanding lead here. Yeah, and this is the argument for the shot clock in the field game. You know, maybe not a 30, but I think some of the leagues have got a minute, I believe, once you get it over center or into the attacking zone, which I think is fair for this type of game and still still allows that possession part of the game to be part of the strategy. I don't think anybody wants to lose that, but at the same time, you know, we want the game to move a little bit because then it makes it a little bit more exciting for, for the fans and... Well, Mark, you're pretty well versed in the sport, and what are your thoughts on the the format that they'll be using in the Olympics and the sixes format that is that's pretty prevalent now in the the women's field game, not so much in the men's. But would you like to see that on the men's side? Well, we've had a chance actually. We ran our first full season in Ontario minor lacrosse of the sixes. It'll take a little bit of work yet. Um, you know, I think we had, there was a big learning curve for the for the men's side or the boys' side. Um, but, you know, because <laughs> there's a lot of hacking and whacking that goes on in, in the box and even in the field, which they were, they were really basically trying to eliminate and making it more both positioning and speed and, and that type of thing. And although there was progress with it, there's a lot more work to be done with it. Um, there are parts of it I loved, parts of it, and like I say, I'll be polite and say I need some work. Well, I was going to ask you what what it, what are your thoughts on the format overall? Because it yeah. and for those that don't know, it sort of takes a a bit of the field game and the box game and mix the two together. Nets a little smaller, fewer guys on the, fewer players on the field, but the field's a bit smaller, yeah. so players have a little bit more room to operate. And mm -hmm. what do you what are your thoughts initially when you? Tell me about when you saw it for the first time and, and, and maybe some of the things you think they can do to make it a little better. Well, a player friendly. Yeah. I mean, watching it on YouTube, trying to get some clips of what the game's all about, didn't really excite me all that much. Uh, being more involved, I was officiating the game, was a little bit more, uh, you know, being more involved with the actual game can be a little bit more exciting. But, you know, it's... It, We'll see how the Olympics go and how it, it, it evolves. But if there's more lacrosse, I'm generally for it. Um, you know, I still love the field game here. And, you know, Milton now is the, I believe this is their first championship, if I'm not uh, mistaken here. So congratulations to them. They've uh, 
haven't been in the league all that long and to come out with some some hardware here is well deserved by that team and the coaching staff so great job by the milton chaos as they come away as the b gold medalist here at the 2024 provincial men's senior field lacrosse championships and turned out to be a beautiful day Congratulations to Milton. Congratulations, of course, to the A gold medal champions from Orangeville, the Generals. On behalf of my partner, Mark Schipkowski, of course, Joel Furman, the commissioner of the league, the officials, all the volunteers, JVI Productions. I'm Lance Wynn. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.